What's up guys, my name is Nick, also known as Temporistic, and I'm going to bring you a new, new series. This is going to be episode number one of Need to Know News by Temporistic, and uh, I just felt like there's a bunch of gaming news that isn't really said on YouTube, or there's not really enough people doing it. I know people like um, DeFranco and Ray William Johnson or, or whoever are doing you know news on whatever, but they don't do enough gaming news, so I thought that I'd start this thing up, see how many people like it. Um, or if they don't like it, I'll just stop doing it, you know, but, um, I just thought that there's a lot of gaming news that not a lot of you know, and it needs to be out there because it's important. So I'm going to start off with first talking about Lucas Films. It has, it is a gaming company that, as you know, has made tons and tons of Star Wars games and movies and everything and has now been taken over by Disney to pursue licensing and different things that swayed away from what they started out with 31 years ago and um, it's a very popular company and of course it did go downhill um, you know Star Wars fans they were really happy with Bioware's Knights of the Old Republic and Raven Software's Jedi Academy and tons of other games that they made all Star Wars they made a couple games that weren't Star Wars but um, even though they made these popular titles that so many people so many people that watch the movies and everything they it didn't bring in enough revenue for the company to stay afloat and they had to change stuff um george lucas felt like his company was uh creating too many mediocre games even though they were uh, getting a lot of revenue for the company um he didn't feel like it was enough and then he quit the company he retired and then he then entrusted the future of the company to jim ward who um, was just appointed to presidency, and then before that, he was the senior vice president of uh, marketing for Lucasfilms. Um, and then he was a key factor in Star Wars: The Phantom Menace's um, in making the movie, and it macked in uh, four hundred million dollars at the box office. And um, after he was appointed CEO. He went from, uh, he, he made it so the company would go from 450 employees to only 190, a bunch of layoffs. And um, April 3rd, 2013, Disney announced that it was going to be closed in LucasArts to, of course, what I said earlier, focus on licensing and all that jazz. And um, I guess what I really want to talk about, about Lucasfilms, is that a company can start off, you know, 31 years ago, and it can be smooth sailing for 10, 20 years, but eventually you're going to have to change stuff. You can't just keep making the same thing. I can compare this to what Bungie's doing and what Infinity Ward Activision Treyarch are doing with Call of Duty, but the thing is, as they haven't been around as long as Lucasfilms, so there isn't a, a reason for them to change. Just how Bungie changed things from Halo 1, 2, and 3 to Halo Reach with Bloom and all that, and then the way the way um, Infinity War is changing what Treyarch and Activision did with um, just keep making the same game with new stuff, and then the customers would just eat it up. Um, they decided to add new features, make it seem more of a realistic game in Call of Duty Ghosts, and that, and it just, it's not what the fans wanted, and it wasn't necessary for them to change things quite yet, because they aren't a, as old of a company as Lucasfilm, who, you know, with 31 years under your belt, you do need to start changing things, so that you don't lose fans out of boredom. So, uh, moving on from Lucasfilms, I'm going to be talking about here, um, Telltale Games, and they did announce that if you watch the Game of Thrones, I don't watch it, I've seen a bunch of clips from it, it looks like a pretty awesome show, as popular, it is as popular as Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead and stuff, and um, they're going to be announcing a game, um, and a new Borderlands game, uh, I played the first Borderlands, it was pretty sick, not my type of game, um, I'm not really into the, uh, you know, the patience that's needed to level up and stuff. In, um, Clyde and going around and searching for things, but um, it's a really good game. So I don't know if they're going to call it Borderlands 3 or what, but um, it should be interesting to see the Game of Thrones game, how different it is from the movie and how much stuff is accurate in the game uh, from the movie. And uh, it's going to be coming sometime in 2014. Um, next thing I want to talk about here 
is the ugly, which of course is Battlefield 4, which I could go on all day about. Um, you know, EA Dice makes fantastic Battlefield Battlefield games. You know, I I haven't pro had a problem with one Battlefield game. I think the most popular game that I've ever seen come from them is Battlefield uh, 2: Bad Company. I've seen tons and tons of players play that, and but the thing that Dice has always had a problem with is getting the servers, since they've had a long relationship with EA. Um, EA always supports them with their servers. It's it's always been a problem because their servers aren't good. Um, just a few things to note here. Uh, the problems with Battlefield 4 was the lack of 64 conquest matches on the 360, and then the customers had to wait until the Xbox One came out to get the 32 um, versus 32 on the um, Xbox One. And then when I jumped into conquest in the game, it still lagged. It's still laggy as shit, and it's so unbearable to play. And that's why I don't play the game, you know. Um, server instability, no server queues. Uh, poor party matchmaking on consoles. Uh, me and my friend Debo, we, you know, um, when we did play Battlefield, we don't really play it as much as more. He plays it more than me, but I would be trying to join him, and it would take forever. Sometimes it would knock me back to the home screen. And I didn't understand why, and I guess it's just because of the server problems. But it, it's I don't know why it has to be such an issue for a party of a few players that just want to play together on the same team in the same game of a game why it has to be such a tedious task and um, it's just something that they've had a problem with and um, it needs to get fixed we've had one hit kill bugs where somebody um, will shoot somebody once and then they'll just die even if it's with the weakest gun in the game and then there's other stuff that you know we can talk about but that's pretty much the gist of it it's just the servers um they suck it's just very poor and um needs to be fixed or they're not going to get as many fans for the next game as they think they're going to get because it's the same thing with halo 5 coming out where how are the customers supposed to trust uh, 3 for 3 that Halo 5 is going to be a good game you know the competitive gamers yeah we will trust them because we're working with them but the casual gamers I don't think they're going to fall for what 3 for 3 did with Halo 4 I don't think they're going to eat the game up I think the box office um, is going to I think it's just not going to be good it's going to be bad uh, bad turnout for the game off the start I think it'll be good after the start but um, and then EA and Dice have been scrambling to fix these issues and the best thing they can come up with so far is um, double XP, double experience and match is, which is fine, but it's like, you know, you, it's, it's their way of saying sorry, but I don't think it's enough, and then they give you this little scope for your pistol, it's like, it's not enough to say sorry. Um, next thing I want to talk about here is um, Microsoft versus Sony. Um, we've seen at E3 how instead of really showcasing their consoles, the games that are coming out with it, and all of the um, hardware, technology, everything that we want to see, they kind of just are attacking each other and saying what, you know, uh, the PS4 does this, but we do this better. And then the PS4, Sony is like, oh, um, we have this, but the Xbox One doesn't have this. And it's like, we don't want to see you guys fighting. We don't care about that stuff. We want to see what games, what stuff can you do. We don't care what they can and can't do. We don't want to compare it. We just want to play the best console, you know? And then, but with that said, Microsoft did congratulate Sony on a successful successful launch. And then Sony responds uh, by saying congrats on the global launch of the Xbox One. So it seems like maybe the Sony and Microsoft fight will kind of dwindle down and we won't have as much drama. And then um, in this Game Informer magazine, and um, most of the information... I get is from this Game Informer magazine that I get each month. I highly recommend you get it. It has, it's like, they actually go and get interviews with, they can, they can get interviews with anybody. They are pop more popular or maybe even as popular as IGN. They, um, they don't lie. They don't, you know, they actually get the information from the companies and, you know, they get it from the source instead of just guessing and making a bunch of stuff up. Uh, they did a Q and A with Nintendo about Pokemon X and Y. Not much information that we don't already know, but it was a good read. 
Uh, and then they talk about the state of MMO. Um, they talk about Age of Conan, Guild Wars 2, the uh, quote, the Lord of the Rings Online, Marvel Heroes Rift, the Secret, um, the Secret World, Star Trek Online, Star Wars, The Old Republic, and World of Warcraft. They just talk about the history with all those games and what it has done for the, um, you know, MMO community and why it's so alive, more alive than any community, I think. Um, and moving on from that, we've got releases to talk about, guys. So, uh, the February releases are as followed. February 2nd, it's not a video game, but February 2nd is going to be Super Bowl 48, and I'm sure we're all excited about that. But, moving on from that, February 4th on the Wii U will come uh, with Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And um, the last Donkey Kong game that I played was on the GameCube. I don't know if you guys remember the little drums that you got with the game. You could just pound them, and then you can control um, Donkey Kong with that. It was pretty fun. But i uh, not sure what to expect with Donkey Kong Country Freeze. haven't really played a Donkey Kong game or seen any gameplay for a long time. So, um, And then on the same day, we've got, um, we've got the Lego movie coming out. The, not, not the movie, but the, the video game. Um, and it's going to be on the PS4, the Xbox One, the Wii U, the PS3, the 360, the PC, and the Vita. And um, I've played a bunch of Lego games, and they've always been fun. A lot of stuff to collect, a lot of stuff to do. And uh, should be a good game, as always. And then, um, something that I never knew about. Uh, let me just close these real fast here. Something that I never knew about, if you can see on the screen here, uh, DICE, the company that makes the Battlefield games, they actually have a summit, something on the lines of E3 or PAX or Comic-Con, where, um, let me see here, where they're actually going to have uh, Sundance with Giovanni on, and they're going to have a bunch of other really popular gaming um, organization CEOs come on and talk, and... Um, I'll have, and it, it's pretty much all it is. It's just where people come and talk and um, see if we can get more information from the website here. You can see pictures. Uh, I guess they're going to be talking about Battlefield. They're going to talk about. Um, oh, they're going to give awards out. Um, so I guess they have their own little award show for video games like Last of Us and Mega Man. Uh, that's about it. Looks pretty cool. I don't know. It's going to be at the Las Vegas, the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Las Vegas from February 4th through the 6th. I never even knew that they had a summit, but it's pretty cool. But uh, moving forward now, the um, next thing we're going to talk about is on February 5th, Turok Returns, but in comic book uh, form. I haven't really. Uh, I've seen bits and pieces of this. Um, never played it when uh, my friend had the Nintendo, but I've heard it's a really good game. Um, I don't know if it's the same thing along, this line, uh, along the lines of Monster Hunter, but um, it looks pretty cool. Uh, so, Next thing is um, on February 7th, Bravely Default Flying Fairy comes out for the 3DS. Don't know too much about this game. All I know is it's coming out February 7th, and... Um, yeah. Next one that we're going to talk about is the Lego movie this time. And we're going to have Morgan Freeman and, um, who else? We're going to have, uh, Batman and, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And it's going to be, vo we're going to have voices from Will Ferrell and Morgan Freeman. Um, haven't seen or even heard of the Lego movie, so it should be interesting. Next thing is going to be Trigger Happy Havoc coming out on, um, February 11th on the Vita and then on the same day we're gonna have lightning returns Final Fantasy 13 coming out on the PS3 and the 360 and then on the same day we're gonna have One Piece Romance of Dawn coming out on the 3DS uh, I'm a huge fan of One Piece I've watched it since it was on Toonami with Naruto Bobo Bo, Dragon Ball Z and all that and it's a really cool show don't really know too much about the video game, but, um, yeah. And then, 
what I'm really interested in is a, um, let's see here, get more information off of RoboCop. February 12th, RoboCop returns to the theaters uh, with a reboot from the 80s movie RoboCop. And um, Joe Kinnaman and Samuel L. Jackson will star along Michael Keaton in this movie, and it looks pretty sick. Haven't watched the first one, but I will definitely watch this when it comes out because he just looks like a badass, as much of a badass um, as Dread. So, yeah. And usually the remakes are really sick, like remakes from Evil Dead and um, uh, with uh, Carrie and uh, Dread. Pretty good remakes, so should be good. And then um, February 18th, Earth Defense Force 2025 will come out on the PS3 and the 360. February 18th on the same day, we're going to have Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, Garden Warfare, which will come out on uh, February 18th on the Xbox One and the Xbox 360. I will definitely be getting this game because it looks freaking sick. I played the first one, and um, you know, it's just it's crazy how like many different zombies and different plants that they have, and it's just like um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's an RTS or what. I would think it's an RTS because you kind of have to strategize where you place your plants. You know, you, you need to know, like, what kind of zombies are going to come out at what time and all this stuff. So, I'm going to get that game. I'm going to play the shit out of it, and it's going to be sick. Um, Ragnarok Odyssey Ace for the PS3 and Vita will be coming out also on February 18th. Don't know too much about this game. Um, sounds like another one of those Japanese things. But, yeah. Uh, next thing we talk about is going to be... Uh, February 19th, DC Comics is billing Forever Evil uh, number 6 as the final fate of Nightwing. Um, Nightwing, I guess, is like some sort of hero or whatever, one of those hero comics. So it's going to be the um, last edition, I guess, of it. So check that out. And then uh, Hayao Miyazaki, if that's how you say his name. Um, on February 21st, uh, first of all, he is the writer and director of Howl's Moving Castle, Princess uh, Monooki, Spirited Away, uh, Ponyo, and several other amazing films from Studio Ghibli. And um, the Rad Rises will release on February 21st as the final film, and it tells the story of a Japanese engineer who designed fighter plans during World War II. And I did see... Spirited Away, and I did see, uh, the one that I remember the most is, uh, Hayao's Moving Castle, I remember watching on Toonami, he, Hayao, uh, Miyazaki, uh, with the movies that I've seen from him, it's just, like, he produces some of the weirdest anime movies ever, and, um, I don't know, it's just weird, the, the creatures in it, and just the way that, it, like, the animation is, it's just weird, but, uh, it says right here that he might revoke, uh, his retirement, so... But his movies are really good. And I did do a uh, showcase, a walkthrough of Castlevania Lords of Shadow. And um, I thought it was a pretty interesting game. It's like part, like, you in like this paper story mode. And then right when it gets to the fighting scene, it turns into this like animated, like really sick Tekken style fighting scene. So uh, you can check that out on my channel if you um, want to see what the game actually um, is and all that, and it comes out February 25th on the PS3 and the 360, um, same day, Tales of Symphony Chronicles comes out on the PlayStation 3, and then Thief, which again, it is a game that I'm really, uh, interested in, comes out on the PS4, Xbox One, PS3, and the 360 on February 25th, uh, kind of reminds me of Dishonored, it isn't made by the same company, but it kind of reminds me of that, because you kind of have to sneak around, uh, gain new weapons and abilities and all this stuff, and I think it's kind of what Thief is going to be like. Um, so I don't, I'm not really going to get this game unless um, like it's really sick and I see a bunch of gameplay from it. Because I didn't, I liked Dishonored, but it was kind of short and it, it wasn't my cup of tea. So the next thing we're going to talk about is another uh, gaming uh, slash nerdy uh, gaming convention, which is going to be Victoria Con Conference Central. Or Center 720 Douglas State Victoria in 
in BC, which is, what is it? British Columbia, dumbass. Uh, on February 28th, it's called Gotacon 2014. It's going to have uh, Dota 2 tournaments. It's going to have a burlesque video game show. It's going to have a, um alternate reality video game. And uh, like I said, it's held in British Columbia. It starts from February 28th and it ends March 4th. And it focuses on video games, board games, trading card games, and various workshops. So pretty much everything that a nerd loves, it's going to be talking about. So you see we have uh, events in League of Legends. Um, see anything else I know of StarCraft 2 and Magic the Gathering so um, looks like it's going to be a freaking pretty big event wish I could go to that and then um, that's it for my notes so jump into my magazine to share with you a game that a bunch of you uh, who probably play on Steam and uh you play Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 on the 360, I think it was on. Uh, they're going to be making a new game called Evolves, which is kind of be kind of kind of have the same feel as Left 4 Dead, but it's going to be in a different way where instead of fighting off like uh, millions and like tons of creatures and monsters, you're going to fight off against one creature. And let me give you some more information. It's made by Turtle Rock Studios. The independent developer has spent more than a decade creating highly refined replayable multiplayer experiences, taking players from the competitive killing fields of Counter-Strike to the team-focused zombie apocalypse of Left 4 Dead. Its newest project pits a four-player squad of space colonizing hunters in a continuous boss battle against an evolving 30-foot monster. Um, let's see here. Only instead of featuring glowing weak points and scripted attack patterns, the beast you're up against is controlled by another human. And then it talks about it's going to redefine, redefine multiplayer and uh, cooperative and competitive play. And it's going to be on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the PC. It's a one. It's a first uh, a one-player shooter. And then you can have up to five players online. Uh, 2K Games is the publisher, and Turtle Rock Studios is the developer, and it's going to be coming out fall of 2014. Um, I didn't play Left 4 Dead. I wasn't really interested in it, but this game looks freaking sick. Um, it's just awesome pictures and stuff. Let me give you some more information. Uh, they do talk about the weapons. You get you get a laser cannon, a electronic shield, a soul rifle, lightning gun, anti-material rifle, med gun, submachine gun, and a harpoon gun to use as your arsenal when you're taking on this huge ass creature. And then of course you're going to be in the woods and the forest and the wild, so you're going to have to fight against uh, animals. You're going to have to fight against sloths, uh, trap jaws, spotters, and carnivorous plants. And uh, that's pretty much all the information I can give you on the video game. If you want to, you know, um, check it out, IGN has a huge article talking about it. And then um, my favorite part of this magazine is where it talks about the top 50 games. I'm going to try to get through this as fast as possible. We've got Devil May Cry, um, Tomb Raider, Dead Space 3, Starcraft 2 Heart of the Swarm, and then the top 10 headlines of 2013. Um... You know, uh, coming at number 10, Valve, with it making its own system and its controller with no analog sticks. Um, you've seen a picture of it. You guys probably know all about it. And then, um, see here, number 6, EA being a disaster. They had to lay off a bunch of their uh, employees because they weren't making enough revenue. And it's their own fault because of their server problems and people don't want to buy a Battlefield 4 game when everybody's telling them that the server's suck and you're probably going to wait 30 minutes before you can find a match. Uh, number 4, Microsoft um, pulls an Xbox 180 when they took back everything that they said because the fans were getting pissed off at them with you know them saying the Kinect had to be connected at all times or your Xbox wouldn't be able to turn on you had to be online at once every 24 hours or you couldn't uh, or your Xbox would shut down or something um, a bunch just a bunch of other stuff and they just took it all back because their fans didn't like it and they shouldn't have even had that stuff in the first place um, 
Of course, number three is going to be Sony dropping the bomb on Xbox and Microsoft at E3 with them shit-talking them and saying, oh, our, our system is better because it does this and this. Number two is, I didn't even know about this, but um, EA discontinued NCAA football. And then number one will be THQ um, going bankrupt and just selling off everything that they have and just becoming nothing. Um... They are the ones that made uh, WWE games and Saints Row, and um, I guess they're all just going to make a new company or something, but I did enjoy Saints Row, so it sucks to see that they went bankrupt and everything. Uh, we've got Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, um, the top 10 characters of 2013, we've got... Uh, Sergeant Rex, Power Cold, who was the main character that you were playing as in Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which I think was an awesome DLC. And then you have Laura Croft, and number 6. Number 5 is Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite. Number 4 is Trevor Phillips from Grand Theft Auto um, 5, which I think should be number 2 or number 1 spot, but they gave him the number 4 spot. Um, Ellie from The Last of Us is going to be number 3 from The Last of Us. Um... And then number one is, of course, Joel from The Last of Us. Um, and, you know, I, th I think he deserves, uh, that character deserves a spot. And then Bioshock Infinite um, does get the award for Best Shooter of 2013. Um, which I think should go to um, Battlefield 4 just because it's an amazing shooter. I think out of every game, it takes the most skill to shoot in Battlefield 4 just because of how real this game is, disregarding all of the server problems and everything. And then we've got Injustice Gods Among Us, um, and they get the award for best fighting game. I put the demo, it was pretty sick. Um, a very realistic um, fighting game, and it was you know awesome playing as your heroes and, vil and the villains and all those Marvel um, comic books and stuff and fighting each other. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We've got Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Yes, yes. Um, Animal Crossing New Leaf. And then the top 10 successes. Uh, Titanfall WoW um, Gamers, which is at number 9, and it should be definitely in the top 3. I played Titanfall Alpha. It was fantastic. You will not be disappointed come March 11th. I promise you. Pre-order the game if you haven't already. Buy it. You will not be disappointed. Uh, number seven is Twitch Invades Consoles, with Twitch, you know, being on the PS4 uh, and Xbox One. Um, number six, programming keeps growing, um, you know, with more and more tournaments coming from MLG, uh, DreamHack, um, LCS, Gfinity, a um, bunch of other tournament um, hosters. Number five, um, Next Gen. Uh, start strong, even though we've had a bunch of problems with the PS4 and Xbox One, we can definitely assume that um, after this, you know, this rough few months is over, it's just going to be smooth sailing from here on out, and we're not going to be getting another console for probably 10 years. This, th these consoles will probably last 10, 12 years, something like that, because they are very, very advanced. And then, number two, the uh, 3DS proves handhelds aren't dead, with uh, the 3DS being the most bought product from Nintendo. They they got like mil I don't know how many millions of customers they got. I don't know if it was twenty million or five million or something like that. And then number one um, is of course Grand Theft Auto Five crushing sales. You know with just breaking Call of Duty records and um, being a fantastic game that has so much replay value. And The Last of Us gets Game of the Year and Best uh, PlayStation Three exclusive. And, um, let's see what else we got here. We've got Dota 2, we've got Pikmin 3. The top 10 disappointments, um, of course, are the, at number 10, the overzealous microtransactions, like with uh, Forza Motorsport 5 and Killer Instinct, where, you know, there's so many microtransactions. Yeah, you can get the game for free, but we're only going to give you one character, we're only going to give you one car, and then you have to buy the rest, you know, and it's a ripoff. Number 9. Um, of course, it's talking about um, EA firing all like pretty much all of their employees and getting new ones and all this stuff just because it's of their own problems that they made for themselves. Number eight um, talks about how the Kinect is just um, it, it shouldn't have come with the Xbox One and 
Um, it's just a disappointment because of how many times you have to say something for it to pick up your voice and just how um, delayed it is and everything. There's just so many problems with the Kinect. And then um, number seven, Broken Age, Broken Promises, um, double, double fine requested a mere $400,000 for this project they were working on. It was a game called Broken Age and um, it received more than $3.34 million but it they said that they're going to cut the game in half and have half sold first and half later and um, number six is of course the Battlefield 4 servers we don't need to talk about it anymore beat the dead horse we're done number four Nintendo still can't figure out online with Wii U having shitty online and you know not many people buying it and they're pretty much done with the Wii U I don't blame them. Number three, you know, SimCity, fantastic game when it launched, but didn't have offline play. You had to be online to play it. Um, and they they rebooted the servers. It fucked a lot of people's cities up. Um, number two, uh, aliens, col uh, aliens colonial uh, marines, shitty game. And then number one, Nintendo still fails to. Um, seal the deal with the 2DS that came out, which I think, um, oh no, the Wii U it talks about, but then the 2DS I think is the dumbest freaking thing ever made, it's, 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 it's the 3DS, but they took away the closing, you can't close it, you know, and I think it's, it's like, how the hell am I gonna fit this in my pocket now, you know, and then we have, um, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, we have the top 10 moments in gaming in 2013, with Assassin's Creed 4, how it talks about um, just how like of a awesome peaceful feeling it has when you're sailing a ship and your shipmates your crew are just like singing like 20 different songs while you're on your way to whatever you need to go and it just makes it like a better experience um, Grand Theft Auto 5 with um, all the highs you can do and like how epic they are and how like realistic they are um, the Last of Us, where in a part of the game, it just takes you away from all of these zombies and crazy people, and you get to like interact with giraffes and like monkeys and all this stuff, and it's just like a peaceful feeling that like it just like uh, Naughty Dog just takes away takes you away from all the chaos in the game, and it just you know gives you a relaxing moment. And then um, the final exchange comes in at number two with Last of Us, how the game ended, see, showing how it, you know the apocalypse is still happening and it's not over. Um, kind of makes it seem like there is going to be a second Last of Us, which I would love to see. And then um, we've got Rayman Legends, we've got Grand Theft Auto V, we've got FIFA 14 with um, winning the best sports award, we've got Pokemon X and Y winning the best role-playing game of the year. Skylanders Swap Force, we've got Top 10 Dorks, um, and let's see what we got here, we've got um, Oliver Garnier comes at number 9 at Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag as um, the number 9 Dork, um, Metal, Gear, uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, we've got Senator Armstrong being the number 4 Dork, and then Luigi comes in at number two from his mansion, and then Wade from Grand Theft Auto V, the one that wears all those piercings and makeup, who is like um, Trevor Phillips' bitch, he um, gets the number one spot with being the number one dork of 2013. And then we've got, what else we got? We've got Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, we've got Batman Arkham Origins, we've got Battlefield 4, XCOM Enemy Within. Uh, Call of Duty Ghost, NBA 2K14, we've got Top 10 Developers, we've got uh, Media Molecule who made Little Big Planet, um, and then we've got Valve at number 9 who made MOBA Dota 2, number 8 is Starbreeze Studios who made uh, My Tale of Two Sons, number 7 is going to be um, TT Games. Who and they're the ones that made Lego Marvel Super Heroes and Lego City Undercover. Just basically all those Lego, Lego games they made. Number six is Crystal Dynamics, who made Tomb Raider, and number five is um, Fire Axis, who made Civilization V, Brave New World, and XCOM Enemy Within. And then uh, rounding out your top four, we've got Irrational, and they're the ones that made Bioshock Infinite. Number three, Nintendo, they made uh, Mario, Zelda, and Pikmin. 
Number two, Rockstar North, who blew sales with GTA 5. And number one, of course, goes to Naughty Dog with um, Crash Bandicoot and uh, The Last of Us. Fantastic companies. And then uh, Need for Speed Rivals, they get the uh, Best Racing Award. Um, flip the page here. Let's see, Dead Rising 3, which I'm still playing right now. It's a fantastic game. The controls for driving, you know, could be better, but it does... Um, get the award for best Xbox One exclusive, which I totally agree with. The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds gets best 3DS exclusive. Um, Super Mario 3D World gets best oh, uh, Wii U exclusive award, co uh, cooperative multiplayer award, and platforming award. And then we've got the top 10 publishers. We've got Capcom, who helped with Devil May Cry, Monster Hunter 3, um, Lost Planet 3 and Dead Rising 3 now. So they've made a ton of games. Number 9 is Square Enix, who helped with Tomb Raider and Final Fantasy 14, A Realm Reborn. Number 8 is Microsoft, who um, did Halo 4. Um, well, that was actually 2012, but uh, Dead Rising, they, um, they published uh, Dead Rising 3 also, Forza More Sport 5, and Killer Instinct. Number seven is Warner Bros. Interactive with uh, Batman and Arkham Origins and Justice Gods Among Us, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, and then uh, number six, Electronic Arts. We've got, um, they did get voted the worst company in America for the second straight year, but you can't count them out when they've made games like Need for Speed, Rivals, and FIFA 14, who did get, which did get the award for the best uh, sporting game. Um... Number five is Activision with Call of Duty Ghosts, uh, Skylanders Swap Force, StarCraft II, Heart of the Swarm, and Diablo III. Number four is Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed, and they also came out with Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, Call of Duras, Gunslinger, and Rayman Legends. Number three, Sony Computer Entertainment, which came out with The Last of Us and Tearaway. Number two is Nintendo with games like Mario, Luigi, Zelda, and um, Pikmin games, and also Pokemon games. Number one goes to Take Two, and they're the ones that uh, published Grand Theft Auto V, uh, Bioshock Infinite, NBA 2K14, XCOM Enemy Within, and Civilization V: A Brave New World. So uh, those were your top ten publishers. We're almost done here. Talks about the editors for the game developers. Um, they get their top ten picks. Um, and then it, talk, it, it talks about the awards for games with um, Killzone Shadowfall on the PS4. Did get the award for best PS4 exclusive alongside Resogun. Uh, Gears of War Judgment did get best Xbox 360 exclusive alongside Battle uh, Lock Theater. And then we get um, Super Mario 3D World. They get the best Wii U exclusive and plat best platforming. Um, Dota 2, best PC exclusive. The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds, best 3DS exclusive, um, and then just a bunch of other stuff. Um, Walking Dead, 400 Days, they got the best um, adventure alongside the Stanley um, par Parable, and um, this has got to be like one of the best game form that magazines they've ever come out with because it just it gives so many awards, it shows so many games, and. Um, yeah, and then uh, Pokemon X and Y does get best role playing award, and there's just so much to talk about. And I'm gonna flip through the pages here. We're almost done. There's just so much information in these magazines. Like I highly recommend you get these. Like they they don't even charge that much for how much you get out of these magazines, um, and how many how much information you get. There's just and then. Uh, Game of the month is obviously going to be The Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 1, All That Remains, with you, instead of playing as um, uh, that black guy, I forget what his name is, but um, you play as Clementine now, and it's a different kind of role, you've got to, you know, as a little, you know, girl, you've got to play it safe, you can't say what you want, you can't do what you want, you've got to... Um, you know, fit in with the group and everything, and, and uh, they give it a 90 out of 100, which is pretty good, and then they give it an 8.5 out of 10, uh, and then Gran Turismo 6 gets an 8 out of 10, 
and um, Peggle 2, the game that I talked about yesterday, um, they gave it an 8 out of 10, just because it's a fun game and stuff, and then they, then they talk about, I'm not going to talk about this stuff because there's so many, but they talk about the top 25 um, Wii games of all time, and number uh, 1 is uh, Super Mario Galaxy, and that's about it guys. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, if you guys did like this, uh, video, um, you know, please give it, a uh, like and, uh, you know, favorite it so people can see it on your YouTube channel and, uh, comment down below. Tell me if you like this series. Tell me if you have an idea of how I can do this better. Um, tell me if I'm rambling too much, if I should... Uh, paraphrase more, um, you know, subscribe so that video could pop up right in your subscription box, follow me on Twitter, um, you know, I post, you know, a video coming out, you know, on that first, so, uh, that'll be down in the description below, as long as my Facebook, my gamertag, etc, etc, and please share this, uh, if you don't want to watch it, it's fine, but if you could please share this, uh, because I know there's probably people that you know that do enjoy, um, video games and they're a bunch of nerds and they do enjoy news and there's a bunch of news in the gaming forum magazines that you would never find in uh, on the website so because they do do uh, interviews with um, people that are very popular in the scene and uh, I hope you guys liked it and I'm sorry if it's a long video but it's news and I'll get you later